The scientific evidence points to the universe having a definite moment of creation, in an intense fireball 14 billion years ago. This Big Bang had to be precisely adjusted so that our lives today are possible. For the astronomers and physicists we've been talking to in these programmes, there isn't any conflict between this scientific evidence and their faith in God. But surely, one of the biggest points of tension is that the Bible seems to say the world was made in six days, and the scientific evidence says it took 14 billion years. How do they solve this difficulty? I was, early on, very interested and concerned about how one would reconcile the long age that astronomers assign to the universe uh, with the relatively recent creation that is apparently the case with respect to the first chapter of Genesis. And how did those days work? Could it be that those days were real days? Or were they long epochs, which had been suggested? And the more I studied about this, the more I realized that trying to uh, get a concordist solution, where somehow the days of Genesis would map into the history of the universe as we see it, uh, it became increasingly apparent to me that that doesn't work that there's something else going on in Genesis 1, but it's not a scientific account. Well, one has to be a little careful here. If uh, I believe the Bible is literally true as long as I can define what those terms mean. You know, I think the Bible is literally what it intended itself to be. And, you know, the notion that the Bible as it was initially presented, the early parts of the Bible, for example, could be interpreted as a scientific text now when the people it was being presented to didn't even have the vocabulary or the thought patterns to do the kind of science that we do routinely now. That seems a little bizarre to me. Um, the Bible says in one place that it was presented as a way of allowing us to believe. Okay, it's the extra insight we need to make sense of our reality. It never promises to be an exhaustive manual of everything. And I understand people who try and preserve the Bible's truth by hanging um, to every literal interpretation they have in English. I think it's a mistake. Those early chapters of Genesis... Um, can only be understood, I think, as uh, an, uh, a, an effort that has served magnificently well for centuries of helping um, we people understand that God started things, he's proud of his creation, he's in control of it, ultimately the struggle between good and evil will be won by good. Um, the details of exactly how things uh, developed, that's, uh, that's just not there. And uh, for a long time, I just didn't say anything about this. I called it a heat but no light issue because uh, I saw Christians get so bent out of shape over these issues, you know. And it's always, it, it's ama it always amazed me how sure people are of things that happened so long ago when they couldn't see it and the record is incomplete. I think a little humility is good. We just don't know about a lot of these things. I think we Christians should be careful not to embarrass our God. If we look at reality... It's clearly much older than what Christians used to think. We just have to make our peace with that. And uh, it, it's clear to me, so I don't spend much time worrying about that. Well, if you look carefully in Scripture from beginning to end, you'll find out that the Scripture is not a scientific text. Obviously, the, the peoples that were the first recipients of these uh, dozens of books of Scripture came from different cultures, different time frames, and it, it helps to use our, our, our brain uh, uh, when we're reading Scripture to try to understand what is God's message and what, what were the original people's uh, culture and, and understanding and what was the vehicle that God was trying to use to get that message across. Now, since science as we know it really didn't exist until the last couple of centuries, it's unwise to try to read 
into biblical scripture the details of a scientific text as we would read it today. I do think that what is important, for example, in the creation account in Genesis, is understanding how powerful and true we find this description to be in the sense that we are told in Scripture that God is responsible for the, the, the creation of everything, the, the, the heavens, the earth, the oceans, the land, the animals, the plants, the people, and yet none of these things are divine in and of themselves. Remember, many, many tribes of people throughout history have worshipped items of nature as though they were spiritual beings. Here we have a revelation that, no, there is one creator God for which all of nature uh, comes, from which all nature is, 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 uh, is descended or comes from. So it's a statement of God's creativity. You could say, in a way, that it's a poetic statement because it is poetically beautiful the way the organization takes place. Well, there's a lot more in the, the way of interesting interpretations of, of Genesis 1, uh, but I feel very comfortable in uh, taking that not as a historical statement, uh, but as a philosophical statement, a statement of design, but not a textbook of geology, biology, and astronomy. So for these scientists, who are also Christian believers, the Bible tells us that God created the universe, but it doesn't set out to answer the scientific questions about how he did it. The Bible was originally written to people who didn't have our current scientific knowledge, and it couldn't have been written in modern scientific terms. And they remind us that there's a lot we don't yet understand, both about the science and about the Bible. So it isn't appropriate to be dogmatic about these matters.